The invasion has begun after a very, very long wait. Alien pistols have finally started arriving in Canada. Welcome to Earth. I was lucky enough to get my hands on two of these out of this world pistols. <laughs> That's funny. Good, good thinking on that one. I'm gonna try my best today to answer two of the most obvious questions. One, does this revolutionary design really make you a better shooter? And two, is this pistol worth its hefty price tag? I'm not gonna bore you guys with a long drawn out intro today. We're gonna jump right into it. What you do need to know is that, well, you may never have heard of Lago Arms, you have probably heard of the CZ Scorpion. So the guy that brought us this badass pistol caliber carbine also invented the alien pistol. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get right in here and probe this alien. Sorry, that was bad. Okay, let's get up close and personal with our alien pistol. Now, this guy is chambered in nine mil. It is only available in nine millimeter right now. Our overall length is about 8.2 inches. Barrel is gonna be 4.8 inches in length, and our weight is about 2.2 pounds. If we make our way down the gun here, we have an extended magazine release. We have a flared magwell. That's actually a nice feature. That's a good magwell. An FDE housing. Check out this grip texturing. Super aggressive grip texturing. Front, back, side to side. This configuration here comes with a fiber optic red dot front sight and just a plain black adjustable rear. If you don't like that though, you can swap it out because in the box comes with another rail with a red dot. More on that in a minute. Let's not forget these cheese grater like serrations on the slide. They are incredibly aggressive and yes, they are very functional. Now that we've gone over the specs, let's look at some of the cool features that make this gun unique. Let's take a look at the cool features of this extraterrestrial blaster. Well, let's start with the most obvious. Look where the barrel is. This gun claims to have the lowest bore access ever, and I believe them. The barrel is not only fixed, but it is directly in line with your hand. It does not move when you fire it, which means you don't have any muzzle flip. Instead, it is more of a push directly back. This will go into my pro category, no doubt. <laughs> so if this works as claimed and there is no muzzle flip, instead it's more of a push, you should be able to maintain your sight picture through each shot. This really helps illustrate that fixed barrel I mentioned earlier. Take a look at the Alien here versus the Glock. There's actually a noticeable movement and bend in the Glock barrel, whereas with the Alien, it is fixed in the frame and no movement at all. This should hopefully lend to accuracy potential because there is no movement or bending when the gun is fired. And that's it, Glock. I will never touch you again. Okay, this feature here is probably one of the coolest. On top of the pistol, we have a non-reciprocating stationary interchangeable top rail here. What that means is when you fire the pistol, the rail does not move. So the thought behind this one is that while I'm shooting, my slide will move, my rail won't, meaning my sights should stay on target. At the very least, this should lead to better sight acquisition. Take a look at how cool and easy this rail swap over is. All I gotta do is push this out, slide it forward, pull it off, throw on the rail with the red dot that's included in the box, push it back, in, done. That's it. Time. It's not fast enough, the zombies would've got me. Lago has worked really hard to reduce weight from any reciprocating components to eliminate recoil. An example of this is their slide. They have essentially removed the top of the slide, meaning less weight going back and forth, meaning less recoil. Let's take a closer look at this trigger. Now this guy is awesome. This is a single action only 1911-ish style trigger. It's got a little gas pedal safety on there and Eddie is gonna measure the trigger pull for us. Eduardo, it's set. hold it tight. <laughs> Eddie can't perform uh, in front of the camera. It's the morning. No way, that Eddie, this is wrong. Are you on the safety? It won't work with the safety. Is it cocked, Steve? 
<laughs> oh my God, edit all of this out, please. Hey, Eddie, welcome. I haven't seen you at all today. Let's try this for the first time ever. Is it cocked? Woo. What is it? Two and three seven. quarter. 2.75. 2.7, okay. I was close, my guess was 2.6. The last cool feature I'm gonna touch on is, you're probably wondering how this thing goes bang. Well, it essentially has an upside down inverted hammer that is thwacking that firing pin forward into the primer, and yes, that is pretty cool. Now that we know what makes this gun so cool, let's see what your $6,000 gets you. Your alien pistol is gonna come inside this gray Nanook case. It is labeled alien and it does have some sort of alien language on the front. Let's open it up and take a look. All right, inside your box, you obviously have your pistol. You have three magazines with the extended base pad on them. You have an Alornis Kydex holster. It is adjustable for drop. Uh, two plastic bottles in here. One of them is CLP. The other one is a carbon remover. Three little adjustment tools, little red snap cap, and last, your interchangeable rail. So this guy here is built with an RTS2 6 MOA red dot on top. You're not gonna mistakenly put your Glock in this one. I wonder if it'll fit. Nope, it won't, good. <laughs> now that we know what's in the box, let's go see if having alien technology will make us a better shooter. Feel the heat on that bad boy. Woo! It Feed gets hot. Up. They weren't lying. Oh. I'll have to mention that. Holy moly. Okay, we are done testing out the alien pistol and I've got a lot to say. These are my initial thoughts. So I don't get out shooting as often as I would like to, but watching me shoot this thing, you can't tell. It's bullseyes all day. How far was that? 10 yards? Yeah. 12 yards-ish? Out of the box. Proud of yourself? I feel like I'm cheating. I'm not proud of myself. I feel like I'm cheating. Pro shooter over here with this guy. Let's quickly touch on recoil. So the recoil with this guy is best described as subdued. And again, it's more of a push instead of a flip. That's noticeable right away. A huge question I was trying to answer was, could I hold sight picture through the recoil? And the answer is, yeah, kind of, almost. I mean, it takes a little practice, but you can. Last initial thought, super reliable. Zero malfunctions after putting like 300 rounds through it. And that's like slow fire, rapid fire, dry fire, all the fires. Let's discuss pros and cons and then my final thoughts. Pros. Let's start with lack of muzzle flip. Now, there's a lot of factors at play when it comes to quick follow-up shots. At the top of that list is recoil management. This gun does it perfectly. Thanks to the low bore axis, this gun recoils straight back into your hand making follow-up shots a breeze. I'd like to add to that, with the red dot, I could actually keep it on the target through my recoil, it barely moved. Second pro, I really, really loved this trigger. This is a single action 1911-ish style trigger, and this thing is short, it's crisp, it has an audible reset. I absolutely loved it. Trigger is one of the best I've ever squeezed. It is reminiscent of a 1911 trigger, but there is a tiny bit of take up. Once you've mastered that little take up, that slack there, you know exactly when it's gonna break, you know exactly when it's gonna reset. It's, it's beaut, it's perfect. That's a good trigger. Let's talk ergonomics. This is a huge pro with this gun. You can choke up extremely high underneath this tang here. You have full control and this abrasive grip texture here is like sandpaper. No matter how sweaty your hands get, you are not gonna drop this thing. I don't care how much Vaseline's on your hands before you shoot your gun. Moving on. Another huge pro for me was the swappability of the top rail. I like that it comes with the red dot already mounted and I went back and forth without any tools on the range as I felt necessary. When I got bored of the red dot, I went back to iron sights. When I got bored of these, I went back to the red dot. It was super easy. Okay, I do have some cons that we'll go through and 
I actually didn't expect this list to be that long because I mean, it's a $6,000 pistol. It's super awesome. I've been looking forward to shooting this, but yes, there are some cons I found and I found them after I started shooting the gun. My first con is that it gets dirty quick. So this has something to do with the uh, delayed gas blowback system inside. But when I was firing it and I do choke up quite high under that, I found the, my dominant hand here, just the webbing of it would get filthy dirty from, I don't know if that was carbon buildup or something underneath that slide. It was disgusting. It's still kind of dirty. I've washed my hands like three times. Second con, I read online before I started shooting this that it had the potential to heat up quick just based on the gas system and the barrel actually sitting down here in the frame. Wasn't sure if I bought into it until I started shooting it. And yes, it heats up like you wouldn't believe. My goodness, there was one point in the range where I couldn't actually put my uh, trigger finger on the slide here because it was just too hot, real hot. Just like my Tinder profile. <laughs> Here's another con. This one's a little bit odd. I don't know. I've never noticed this in any other gun and this, maybe it's just me, but your slide lock lever, if you lift it from the back here, trying to lock your slide to the rear, you can't really catch it. It just doesn't work. You actually have to pivot it from the front of the lever, which is weird. It's really weird, but it's a thing. Okay, here's another con for me. Slapping in magazines on an open slide like this actually chambers around. Some people like that. I think IP6 shooters might like that. I don't like that. Um, I think the reason I don't like it is because it wasn't predictable. Sometimes it did it, other times it didn't. If it's gonna do it every time, I'm okay with that. And I kind of expected it to, but there was times when I was rushing to quickly load a mag, I would slap it in and it would stay back, but I'd push out on target. Spongy trigger, oops, chamber it and then go. Really weird, really weird. You know what's weird about this is that on the internet, everybody just talks like nothing but rainbows and daisies about this gun. And I'm like, were you paid to do your reviews for real? Because it's not perfection. Okay, here's another con for you. This is a weird one. If you load your mag completely full, which is 10 rounds in Canada, have a closed slide, insert it, and then you go to rack it, it is the toughest thing on the planet. I use all my muscle to actually rack that first round into the chamber. That first one does not like to be racked. Just want you to feel, just rack the first one. Pull that. Woo, right? What? That first one's a doozy. That would be a lot easier if I could reach over top, you know, grab the slide with a lot of meat on my hands, but you can't do that on this because the only thing that moves is this little part here. So I can't grab this red dot to rack it. I have to pinch pull and rip the skin off my fingers from these serrations here by grabbing it and pulling so damn hard. And I noticed that a couple times because the meat on my thumb was like worn raw from going like this and going. Here's something that I didn't expect. So both guns I used today were brand new out of the box. There were no modifications made to them. Nobody shot them first. Both guns had the screws in the magwell back out and the actual magwell fall off while shooting. Both guns. That's not good. Oh, well, the screw just backed out by the look of it. And then it slid off. But get, you might want to get that. Is that the magwell? Oh, sh I read that that could be a problem. Ooh, that's hot. I know, and you guys at home know you can use blue Loctite, make sure it's in there nice and snug, but would you expect to drop 6K on a gun and that thing to fall off the first time you're shooting it? Not cool, Lago. So these are my final thoughts. I went into this expecting this thing to be like magic. Everybody told me this was like a 10 out of 10. This would be the best thing I've ever shot my entire life. And while it was close to 10 out of 10, I did pick up a few uh, quirks that I didn't like so much about it. Let's answer the question that I asked at the start of the video. Does this gun make you a better shooter? Yeah, a little bit. This gun is not the magic pill that everybody says it is. This is not gonna take some random stranger off the street and make them some pro Ipsic shooter overnight. This thing complements already well-established fundamentals in shooting. If you know what you're doing, it will help a little bit, but this is not gonna perfect anything. I would compare this to getting behind the wheel of a Ferrari. Just because you're there, it doesn't make you a race car driver. You still have to know how to turn the thing on, how to put it in drive, how to apex those corners. All it does is complement skill sets that exist. And yes, if you're good at that, you can leave those glocks in your dust. Once you have the fundamentals down, people are gonna have a hard time keeping up with you. So this gun is obviously not cheap, but it wasn't designed to be cheap. This is not a competitor to glocks by any means. This is in a category of its own. In fact, this gun here is officially listed as Ipsic Production Division, and that's exactly where I expect this to end up. 
This is a race gun by all means. Does the gun live up to the hype? Absolutely. Would I buy this gun? Yeah, probably I would. I liked it a lot. I had fun with it for sure, especially with the red dot on it. My rating is nine out of 10 ET phone homes, even though y'all were expecting nine out of 10 crazy aliens from that movie. No, I wanna keep it cute and cuddly and fun. So thanks for watching. See you next time. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please hit like, subscribe, comment below, share it with your friends. See you next time.